a second. It's actually how the government tells us to deal with predators is really the same way we need to deal with tyrants. And as we were just covering in the last few segments, people are calling for a constitutional convention. Many people believe that with clearer language, maybe the criminals in Washington would obey the people. But hey, you know what? Lois Lerner and the current IRS commissioner don't care about Congress. They don't care about the sorts of orders for an investigation that when Congress did that to Nixon, they impeached him. And of course, one of the other articles of impeachment with Nixon was that he used the IRS against political enemies. So there's two of the three right there, just in that one <laughs> scandal. Uh, of course, when Nixon asked the IRS to do it, the uh, commissioner saved the paper, said he didn't do it. But now we have the IRS actively and openly doing this because the IRS, let's, let's understand, the IRS has been used by Republicans and Democrats to punish their political enemies for a very long time. That explains really, in my opinion, why the Republicans are not doing anything. They're like a bad parent saying, I really mean it this time. If you don't give me those emails from 2010 in January, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to do something about it. I'm, I'm going to say that you're in contempt. <laughs> I mean, come on. And then they don't do it. If you're a parent and you tell your kids, all right, I'm going to count to 10 and you better do what I say at that point in time, you know what? They're not, they're not and then you don't do it even then, they're not going to pay any attention to you. Uh, giving them ultimatums like that, especially ultimatums that you don't enforce, is the way to be a very, very weak and effective parent or a weak and effective legislature because they don't care. But they think that they're going to have the reins of power again. And they're going to use the IRS to punish their political enemies. That's why they're not doing anything about it except trying to make some, score some cheap political points. But the danger about all this is that when they do it in, op in the open, when they pull this out and they show it to everybody and they show, they pull back the veil and they show all the corruption behind the curtain and then they do nothing about it, they have taken us to an all new low level. That's the real danger of an ineffective and corrupt government. And so we were talking about where does that meet the road? Well, it meets the road at the point where the police start invading our homes, like the videos that we were just showing before this, where they start pointing guns at our children, where they start pulling over senior citizens and giving them a, a drug treatment, uh, you know, looking for drugs in their car, pulling over three or four uh, patrol cars showing up, rousting the guy out of his car, putting drug dogs in his car simply because he's got a Colorado license plate and he's in a neighboring state? Really? Is that the kind of society that you want to live in? Maybe you don't have a Colorado license plate, but you know what? You're living under the government that is encouraging our citizens to be treated as suspects. Remember, this is the same government that put out those uh, no hesitation targets and they had children as well as pregnant women, as well as elderly. And that's what we're seeing in these cases. So what do we do about these kinds of predators? Alex Jones has an idea. We're here at Big Bend National Park and everywhere we see lessons that are applicable in mother nature, but also in human interactions with bullies. And when I'm talking about bullies, I'm talking about government itself, historically, the biggest bully and the largest danger to human populations. Of course, the University of Hawaii did a big study about it a decade or so ago, finding that government conservatively killed in non-military related deaths, 262 million people in the 20th century. And government is already online in the 21st century to break that record. Now, what does that have to do with Big Bend? I'll tell you right now. Look at this. Lion warning. A lion has been frequenting this area and could be aggressive towards humans. If you see a lion, pick up small children. Stand together, appear large. Wave arms, shout aggressively. Throw stones or sticks, report sightings to a ranger. Do not show fear, crouch down, run away. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. When humans act aggressive and, and defend their private property and are armed, predators, whether they're bullies or mountain lions, whatever the case is, don't come after you. When you grovel, like to the TSA, and bow down 
and someone in a uniform becomes God. That's the essence of North Korea, the essence of Mexico, the essence of tyranny. A TSA agent was arrested on January 3rd and was behaving erratically, saying, I am God, I'm in charge. And so the answer is to be basically a noble savage who's into science and technology and is informed but at the same time retains your human instinct to not be a prey animal, but to quite frankly be a predator. That's what's happening is subgroups of humans in government are engaged in predator activity on us. That's called tyranny. We're supposed to form family units, cultural units that defend each other and build a better civilization based on renaissance, art, uh, literature, not based on the rule of the thug. So next time tyrants are in your face, don't show fear, don't crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you. Don't bow down, don't run away. Stand up, stand together as communities. That's why they're destroying families. That's why they're playing men and women off against each other. That is the plan. So come together, folks. Unity. Unity for the basic Bill of Rights and Constitution. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. We're going to go back to a report from a year ago that David Knight filed, similar to this one, pointing out the correlation to bears and how you should behave around them. I'm David Knight, reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Just before I left for Austin, I took my family to the Smoky Mountains. Now, long before the Europeans named it the Smoky Mountains, the Cherokee had a name for it. And I, if I pronounce it correctly, it's something like Chaconoque, which means place of the fine particulate smog. No, not actually. That's what the EPA wants you to think. I was surprised to see this graphic on the EPA site where they explain what PM 2.5 is. They use the Smoky Mountains as a poster child. Is it really PM 2.5 and man-made smog that makes the Smoky Mountains smoky? No. We all know that it isn't, but we see this kind of thing done over and over again, like they did with polar bears on ice floes. Remember that? And of course, Al Gore is telling us that the oceans are rising, but he builds his $9 million mansion in Montecito, California, right on the ocean side. So I don't think he believes that either. But they use these subliminal messages to try to convince us. And they can be quite effective. And speaking of bears, every visitor to the Smoky Mountains gets a handout that looks like this, warning you about black bears. And as my wife was reading that to the small children, I started thinking a lot of the stuff they were saying about bears could be said about government, especially about the EPA. Let me just uh, read a few things here. Uh, with aggressive behavior, the bear, the EPA, is demanding more space. If the bear or EPA continues to follow you, stand your ground. If the EPA gets closer, talk louder or shout at it. Act aggressively. Act together as a group if you have companions. Make yourself look as large as possible. Don't run, don't turn away, and don't feed the EPA. It only encourages further problems. It's David Knight for InfoWars Nightly News. First report that I did when I came here, and of course, the thing that was breaking at that point in time, Alex had already talked to someone a year and a half ago, just before I got here, about the EPA's human testing program that was going on right there in North Carolina, trying to make a case for fine particulate matter. You know, a year earlier, Lisa Jackson had said that as many people died from fine particulate matter, that would be things like wood smoke, okay, as people who were dying from cancer. It was a setup press conference with her and Representative Markey. He was feeding her questions and they wanted to emphasize that. That was a narrative that they wanted to come out of that was that it was so dangerous that they had as many people dying from that as they did from cancer. That was in September of 2011. And she made it very clear. She said, I'm not talking about people getting sick. I'm talking about it actually killing you. Now, at the time she was doing that dog and pony show at the congressional committee, they also had the EPA in North Carolina hooking people up directly to diesel fumes, diesel exhaust coming out of a truck, running it through a pipe onto a mask on their face in a small room. And that was what they were doing at the time, trying to make a case to increase the regulations against fine particulate matter. And we see now on uh, Drudge, last couple of days, it's come back in the news because we picked up on the story here at InfoWars as the um, group that Steve Malloy was associated with, his website is junkscience.com. 
And it was American Tradition Institute at the time that filed a lawsuit, a temporary restraining order that they were trying to get to stop this experimentation on people. And of course, it got to their attention because Steve Malloy happened to notice that this lady was sent to the hospital as part of some EPA tests. It turns out that they were actually selecting for people who had heart conditions and respiratory conditions because they wanted to try to make it look as bad as possible. But we have a government that is every bit capable of doing horrible human experimentation of people, as we pointed out earlier this week when I talked to Alex about the EPA story. And we've got a story that I think we haven't uh, covered so much here at InfoWars, a story about the government's history with PTSD and the way they treated World War II veterans and something even more frightening. And that is what, the, what DARPA is proposing to do in the future to cure PTSD. But before we get away from this, I want to talk about, um, before we get away from pre police brutality, I want to talk about why the government is doing this in so many cases. Of course, it's being pushed from Washington, it's being pushed from Homeland Security, but it is also being pulled from the private prison system. Look at